A place of darkness, frightful warning, place of spikes, frying pan, thorny trees, sword-lived forest and place of iron fitters. It is hell. John Milton's Paradise Lost, particularly Book 1, has a vivid description of it. It is both geographical as well as psychological domain. Hello friends, I am Ardhendu De. You are watching Edis English Literature. Today, we are going to discuss Hell as described in Paradise Lost Book 1 by John Milton. In this video lecture, you can find depiction of Hell and how differently Milton depicts Hell in this particular work. Regarding the features and characteristics of Hell, we will meet critical views as well. Now first, who is John Milton and what is Paradise Lost? John Milton is an English poet and prose writer. He is best known for composing expansive masterful poems in a variety of forms and daring prose in defense of civil, domestic and religious liberties and the Puritan cause. In 1649, he published The Tenure of Kings and Magistrates, a pamphlet defending the rights of the people against tyrants, and was appointed Foreign Secretary in Oliver Cromwell's government, a position uh, that he held until 1660. In 1652, he lost his eyesight, his wife died, and their son soon after her. In 1667, he published Paradise Lost, an epic poem of good and evil. In 1671, published the epic poem Paradise Regained, his uh, sequel to Paradise Lost. Along with the poetic drama Samson, Agonistes, it was published. In fact, Milton had expressed a desire to write an epic nearly 30 years before Paradise Lost was published. So it was a long chase. Although his work was later criticized by such authors as English poet William Blake and American born English poet T.S. Eliot, John Milton's Paradise Lost, which was published in 1667, is still considered the greatest epic poem of early modern English literature. His book one explains the origin of the conflict between God and Saturn. Milton's portrayal of Saturn is quite unique, a character with real motivations and desire. Saturn is led astray by excessive pride and belief in his own power over God's power. So these pivotal drama or a piece of Biblical drama is enacted in his Paradise Lost. To locate the geographical location of Milton's hell, we have to understand his solar system. In describing the planets and other celestial bodies, Milton models God's creation on the Ptolemaic design. He also called it a geocentric design rather than the Copernican design which is called a heliocentric design. Milton was aware of the Copernican theory but he used the Ptolemic design either because he believed it was the more credible theory or because he believed it would better serve his literary purpose. In Paradise Lost Adam inquires about the movements of celestial bodies in particular, whether Earth orbits the Sun or vice versa. In his conversation with the Archangel Raphael, but Raphael gives no direct answer here or uh, the definite answer is not given. 
Rafael may have been speaking for Milton here. As per Milton's description, hell is here. Look at this picture below. At south. Now, what is hell? What does the Bible say about hell? Hell and heaven figure prominently in holy text from the ancient Hindu mythology to Bible. Now, Hindu text is the ancient one, the primitive one. Uh, we read about it in the oldest book in the world, Rig Veda. There is not a single religious scriptures without a reference to hell. Reference to hell are found in the Sangam Tamil literature and post Sangam Tamil book Tirikural, the Tamil Veda. In ancient Greek texts also mentioned this hell. So through, uh, through later Hindu scriptures referred to various hells, Rig Veda all, only one hell is mentioned. It is a dark place but no mention of torture or suffering in there. Naraka, the particular word we call Jam Loko, is the Hindu equivalent of hell, where sinners are tormented after death. It is also the abode of Lord Jama, the god of death. It is described as located in the south of the universe, beneath that. So here is the parallel, the biblical hell as well as the Hindu mythological hell is quite parallel. Now in the text of Bible, the word hell is differently translated. In the King James Bible, uh, in the Old Testament term S-H-E-O-L, soul is translated as hell times and it is translated as the grave and the pit. So modern Bible translation typically renders Seol as the grave, the pit or death. Hell as the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth is not mentioned in the Old Testament. The term hell in fact derives from heads which is a Greek term that appears only 10 times in the New Testament. So Hades is an unseen place, the place of the dead underworld. Usually in New Testament, uh, it is the temporary underworld prison where the souls of the ungodly await the judgment. There is another word, Gehenna. It is the valley of the sons of Hinnom. Figuratively, it is in the Gospels for hell, a fiery place of eternal punishment for the ungodly dead. The Bible word Gehenna describes the final abode of the wicked and of Satan himself. Tartarus, the another word, is the name of a subterranean region, doleful and dark, regarded as the ancient uh, by the ancient Greeks as the abode of the wicked dead, where they suffer punishment for their evil deeds. It answers to the Gehenna of the Jews. So, so hell in different texts, in different ancient scriptures, religious scriptures, we can find plenty of it. The first book of Paradise Lost proposes first in a nutshell, the entire subject. What is the subject? Man's disobedience and the misfortune that immediately of uh, uh, losing the paradise where man was residing. Then the story goes on to the what's the prime reason for man's fall. It was the conspiracy of the serpent. Now who is that serpent? Saturn is within the serpent who revolting from the God and attracted to his side numerous armies of angels was by the direction of God driven out of heaven with all his group into the great depths. Whilst the action disregarded 
the poem hurries into the middle of the things giving satan and his angels presently falling into the hell portrayed here not uh, uh, in and the inside yet in a position of absolute murkiness filthiest called chaos so we find within few lines that we are in the hell of all the narrative passages in paradise lost book one now milton's description of hell stands out unique by virtue of its graphic pictorial quality and its equivocation of a sense of gloomy terror though milton was aware of the renaissance concept that heaven and hell are no specific topographical locales but states of mind itself he clings to the medieval concept of hell of having topographical entities milton presents hell as a place designed for the eternal punishment of the fallen angels hell is a place far removed from the celestial seat of bliss it is situated in the nethermost depth of the abyss and it takes nine days and nights to fall into this dreadful pit from heaven hell is an assemblage of all the arbitration human emotions like pains despairs envies restlessness heartlessness heartburn this scene of barren desolation is vividly described by milton a dungeon horrible on all sides round as one great furnace flamed yet from those flames no light but rather darkness visible served only to discover sights of all here is sinister wilderness a dismal situation west and wide while satan surveys hell as far as he can see and observe he finds it a vast gloomy and dreary region it is like a huge underground prison terrible to behold hell is a burning rain a place of sultriness a burning oven a place where one is trapped and chained forever from the burning furnace of hell the constantly flickering flames issue no light they only provides antasmagoria of dim visibility the media will know sell that the flame of hell give no light is derived by milton instigates that the damned and the doomed are deprived of the sight of god and that god is the very form of light it is a place where fire exists without light and darkness is almost tangible and this darkness itself reveals the sight of misery hell is a region of sorrows miseries helplessness and eternal torment a look at hell reveals now he thought both of lost happiness and lasting pain torments him lasting pain torments him round it throws his baleful eyes that witnessed huge affliction and dismay mixed with acute pride and steadfast hate at once as far as angels can he views that is mal situation west and wild dungeon horrible on all sides round as one great furnace flamed yet from those flames no light but rather darkness visible served only to discover sights of oh rains of sorrow doleful shades where peace 
and rest can never dwell hope never comes that comes to all but torture without end still urges and a fiery deluge fed with ever burning sulfur note this ever but still urges with a fiery deluge fed with ever burning sulfur and consumed so hopes being totally absent here there are only never ending tortures and there is no release no release from here for the fallen angels it is very unlike the place from whence they fall it is the very contrast of heaven hell is a lake of ever burning sulfur a flood of fire which constantly overwhelms and engulfs the victims imprisoned in this dreadful gloom such a place emancipated by utter darkness has been designed by god for the fallen angels as a mark of punishment for their foul revolt the floods and will winds of tempest was fair make it the most torrid climate it is all wrapped up in smoke and foul smell like a volcano it blasts vapor and blows up rocks here is the burnt surface at the bottom the lakes of ever burning fire are thus one part of hell only on another half of a terribly dungeon lies an open space a vast tract of solid ground of burning marl such a place of course heat and insufferable anguish is a hellish where peace and rest are impossible peace rest hope calmness these are all enjoyable and worth living is the subject of god but here it is completely absent this is a place of a perfect partition where to exist is to experience the worst death in a deathless world milton's hell is described partly as the readers might see it and partly through certain side the objective and subjective torments of hell are like mingled where from we can experience hours as well as certain smite but before we go to conclusion we must mention the pandemonium towards the end of the book one milton has another view to show of hell on the near side of the burning ground stands a massive structure it is of architectural excellence the capital and the place of saturn it is called pandemonium amid is the bowls of precious cards gold emerald it is a miracle of architecture milton describes how these army uh, of builders it is fallen angels prepares many many cells from which beauty gilded forth in every form the pandemonium is that creation in hell designed for infernal conclaves which would rival in its splendor the greatness of human creations and perhaps even divine architecture it is a word formed by the union of two greek words pan means all and demon means demon but the compound word did not exist in the greek vocabulary and milton formed it out um, of the analogy of pantheon the abode of the gods the pantheon at rome was a temple containing containing uh, statues of all the gods milton's pandemonium is like that of a capital of hell built to receive all the devils so very opposite but ganger is the same the coinage of milton have gained currency in the english as 
common noun being used to express a place full of tumultuous voice, confusion and discord is called pandemonium. Now coming to the point, the pandemonium is built in a corner of hell. The place of a horrible dungeon of darkness visible, which is in its turn had been created by God as punishment for the rebellion of Satan and the fallen angels. Now, fallen angels were living in heaven, but they are ousted from heaven and as for punishment, they are now residing in hell. Now, as they are fallen, but they are angels, they were angels. So after the Satan's valiant speech, inspiring words, uh, when we when we meet it at the fifth speech, a numerous brigade hastened to a hill, where grisly top and blanched fire and rolling smoke. The brigade is compared to those of pioneers in the army who advanced before the king or the commander to make a troop or prepare a camp. So fallen angels are all assembled by the call of Saturn, and soon the crew. Working under Mammon began to dig the center of the earth for hidden minerals. They opened up the volcanic hill. Pand pandemonium is built. Now this pandemonium is a miraculously produced marvelous creation. And here, let here who boost in mortal things and wandering tale of Babel and the work of Memphian kings. Milton father says, learn how their greatest monuments of fame and strength and art are easily outdone by spirits reprobate, easily outdone by spirits reprobate. Now, emphatically like that of Miltonic simile or Homeric simile, if the Egyptian pyramids had taken the huge lakhs of people 20 years to construct, they are able to create a greater architectural marvels in an hour by these fallen angels. The roof is gold, made of gold, and the building was of steadily height. The structure was so massive as to have huge brass doors, which when opened, revealed a pale face and level pavement. The miracle of the rare device was lit by rows of starry lamps and crescents which hung from the arched roof by subtle magic since there was no supports. Milton declares that neither Babylon nor could great Alsario boost of such wealth and luxury such splendor and magnificence. So pandemonium, the very high capital of Saturn and his peers is both itself architectural and uh, itself architectural excellence and the product of a miracle. But Milton presents such magnificence in inimical and does this not merely because it is inhabited by the rebel angels but perhaps also because the Puritan in him mutilates against such vain splendor. So the ironical class is obvious from this description. I must conclude this lecture by quoting C.S. Lewis and Professor Helen Gardner. In a preface to Paradise Lost, C.S. Lewis observes that Milton's description of hell is never concrete, there being no definition of such things as the size of hell, the exact nature of its tortures or the degree of heat that Saturn feels there. Now you can all have these references from Indian context. Renowned critic Professor Helen Gardner has rightly observed in a reading of Paradise Lost, it's all enclosing dreadfulness, terrifying, drafting, awareness of remorse, distance from God, pain from which its inhabitants can never escape, 
though terrible it, it is not formless sea and land exist and from its soil issues forth destruction unavoidable one should also remember that milton's graphic description of hell intensifies the tragic intensity and overwhelming effect here is the concrete world for the abstract idea here is the opposite of heaven but mind is its own place for certain who is even ready to brave the hell now this description of hell and the related discussion might have help you in understanding paradise lost particularly the section of hell that you will find in book 1 if you have any question just pop up here ask me question i will try my best to give some explanation like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel bye bye